Hi everybody. I thought it'd be a good idea for us to work through one of the force problems from last week's workshop. In this particular problem, we have a skier who has an initial speed of 2 meters per second, and they ski straight down a slope that has an angle of 15 degrees relative to the horizontal. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the skis and the slope is 0.1. We want to find the skier's speed after 10 seconds. And so what we need to do is to figure out first, ask ourselves, why is the skier's speed increasing? And it's because of gravity, and so that means that there's a force on the skier that's causing their speed to change, and that's called acceleration. So in order to find the acceleration, we're going to have to find the force, and then once we find that the force, then we can find the acceleration, and then we can find the speed after 10 seconds. So here's how we're going to do this. First, we have to find, um, first we have to set up the free body diagram for this scenario. So let's start with the free body diagram for the skier. So there's our skier. And they're on a slope of 15 degrees. So that slope looks kind of like that. And the skier has several different forces acting on them. And as always, we have the weight, which points straight down. And the weight, of course, is equal to mg, just like always. And there's also friction, which points in the opposite direction than the person is going. They're skiing down the hill, so friction points the other way. And we use a script f to denote the friction. And then we also have the normal force, as always, and normal means perpendicular, and it is perpendicular to the slope, and we denote that m, and then we can ask ourselves, gee, is there any other force acting on the skier? Well, think about um, the various forces that are shown here. We might be tempted to say, oh yeah, there's got to be a force pulling them down the hill, like that, but the problem there is that we don't actually have a force like that because you'd have to blame this arrow, this force, on some object. We've got gravity, we've got the slope pushing up, that's the normal force, and the slope also exerts friction. What other force could this be? It turns out that this force is actually the sum of all of these things, so we actually have to find this. and. So this force right here is going to be the sum of the other three forces. So that is equal to this. Okay, so that force is equal to the normal force plus the weight plus friction. Notice I am not trying to say pluses and minuses or anything yet. I've got vector symbols over each one of these. And the summation means that you add these up. So you have to add them up as vectors. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is to find the various components of all of these vectors. Now, what you could do is just use the regular xy coordinates, but that makes for an awful lot of math. We've already got two vectors perpendicular to each other, so why don't we just use that as our new x and y coordinates. So if we call this y and this x, it makes the math so much easier. And so then we just have to find the two components of the weight instead of finding two components for the friction and two components for the normal force, because that's a big pain in the butt. Okay, so it turns out that if you do a little bit of geometry and um, or just kind of reasoning through it, you can see that this angle right here has to be the angle of the slope. Imagine the slope had a zero angle, meaning it was just perfectly flat, then this angle right here would collapse down to zero. But it's not. It has a little bit of an angle that's equal to 15 degrees, and that is represented by this angle. So the x component of the weight, this component here in the x direction that points parallel to the slope, is equal to w times the sine of theta. Okay, that's this right here. And then the other one is w times the cosine of theta. 
that's the, the one that points opposite to the normal force. So what we're going to do is to set up a system of equations. These three forces, when added together, is equal to the mass of the skier times the acceleration. Okay. And so what we're going to need to do is to figure out all of the um, x and y components of each of these vectors. And what we're going to do is to set up a system of simultaneous equations that will allow us to do that. That system of simultaneous equations is going to look like this. What you have to do is to say, okay, here's the normal force and what is the x component of it? And you look here, it doesn't have one. What's, um, so, and so let's keep track of what we're doing here. So here are the x components of all the forces. Notice this is not an equal sign. So the normal force doesn't have an x component. The weight does. It's mg sine theta. And it should get a, no, it should have a positive sign because it points from here to here. And so that's in the positive, what we have called the positive x direction. And then the other force is friction, which that should get a minus sign. And if you remember correctly, the friction force is equal to mu times n. And then this is all equal to m a, the acceleration in the x direction. So there's one equation. And the other equation is going to be in the y direction. Okay, so we've got the y direction. Let's look at the components of the uh, the y components of the normal force. Does it have one? Yeah. Um, and it points in the positive y direction. So there's the normal force, and there's this component of the weight, mg cosine theta, points opposite of that. Okay, so what's the acceleration in the y direction? Turns out that it's zero because all the acceleration is along the slope or in this new x direction that we've called. So this is zero. Now we've got a system of simultaneous equations that we can solve. What you've got here is n is equal to mg cosine theta. So you take your mg cosine theta and it's equal to n. So we're solving simultaneous equations. The next thing that you can do is to actually write this out. We've got mg times the sine of theta minus mu times mg cosine theta is equal to ma in the x direction. And you can see right away that the masses cancel out. It doesn't matter what the skier's mass actually is. Now we have an expression for the acceleration. Okay. You can plug those numbers in to your calculator and figure out what the acceleration is. Now that we have the acceleration, this is what we're going to do. We are going to clear everything off. We have some value for the acceleration. Okay, so the ax that you just solved for. And what we're going to do is to find out um, how to use that. We want to find the skier's speed after 10 seconds. It gave an initial speed, which is this. It gave, we want to find the final speed. We have the acceleration and it tells us after 10 seconds. So this would be a useful equation to use to find what we want to find. So let's give that a try. Vx is equal to v naught x plus axt. So using the ax that you found in the previous step, and the time here is given to be 10 seconds, and hopefully you did not round the ax off to too many, um, too few significant digits. Keep a few extra. It looks like this one you can round off to two in the very last step, but I would keep three if not four throughout the whole problem. Um, the initial velocity is two, and we want to find this. Okay.